City Jewelry Week. How are you? <laughs> yeah. everyone out. Hey, Johnny. What's up, April? What's going on? What's up, NYC Jewelry Week? I'm yes. glad to be here, you know? We are glad to have you. Thanks both for being here. Take it away. Namaste. Namaste. So I'm going to jump into it. i am really been looking forward to this conversation. And I see you got your flag in the background, Black is King. I'm, I see you with the walk away bandana. Woo -woo. You know <laughs> <laughs> so I have so many questions. Um, some are mine and some are from the people that want to know more about you. So let me just start by talking about us, like hip hop, like creativity, like New York City. So I want to start by um, finding out, like, when did you fall in love with hip hop? That's my first question. When did I fall in love with hip hop? Um, I think I fell in love with hip hop just growing up in general. Um, it was what was on the radio. It was what I seen all around me. You know, like I had my my cousins that was rapping. I had I had my uncle, my uncle Pilo. He was actually he's actually a low life. He used to carry like a boombox around. Um, my father, uh, my father used to be in the basement making beats with his friends and stuff. And then sometimes I would go down there and start rapping. That's when I was like five. So I guess around that time, like I guess from the time that I from the time that I can remember that I know that I know like like when my memories start you know so right. <laughs> I was like around four or five <laughs> okay all right. all right and then what like when did you realize you loved jewelry like period like did you you know what I mean did you like fall in love with it was it a gradual process what was your process to like being drawn to jewelry um, being drawn to jewelry, I would say, um, hmm. Oh, I would see it on people, you know, like I think back in the days, it was just like all of the, like, like as you was just like coming outside and just like going to like the corner stores and stuff, like you will see people rocking like the big chains and, um, just rings like the, um, like the nugget rings and stuff like that, you know? Uh -huh. um, so even my grandfather had like a gold tooth, you know? So it was uh -huh. just like, it was think, all around you. Yeah, you know, it, it's inevitable. It was culture. And well, do you relate that hip hop and, and, and um, jewelry go, going together hand in hand? Was that part of that natural evolution in terms of just falling in love with it? Yeah, was like. It, was it everywhere in New York City? Was it just New York period? You know what I mean? Was it one or the other, or was it everything? Well, I, I feel like hip hop and jewelry go hand in hand, you know, because every time I would see like a rap or, or just somebody like on stage, they had they had like a ring or or like a necklace or j just something else that I add to them, you know, to to make the um to make the stage performance even look better, or even like when he was taking a pictures and stuff, you know. Right, it was definitely part of. The, I remember Slick Rick. Like for me, like he was, he was always dripped out and had so much jewelry on, but there were so many people. I, you know, growing up in Brooklyn, I saw the same things, but it was like, you know, big chains and dookie robes and, you know, big earrings. And, you know, all of this was like, we're talking all the way from the eighties. I remember it being such a lifestyle as part of the actual outfit. It was just as important the chain you had on or the earrings as much as the sneakers and what you were wearing, you know what I mean? So it was really important. Like, but everybody had a different style. Mm -hmm. You know, some people were less is more and some people were like in your face. What was your style always? My style or like when or I has when it I, changed? Has it changed? Or you know what I mean? Yeah, my style definitely changed and it and it varied, you know, and, and then it's and it's always like it's always like according to your budget, you know. Um Absolutely. I think the first piece that I bought out of my pocket, like my first real gold piece, was a um was a nameplate earring. 
what was a nameplate earring. It said J J A Y. You know, like a on like a double plated um, white. No, it was yellow gold with like rhodium trimming around it. You know, like that was my first piece I bought out of my pocket. Like that was fire, and I was like what thirteen or something, thirteen or fourteen. Like I saved up my um my summer youth check. <laughs> You know, so I had to go back to school stunting. Like that was that was that was fire, you know? Um then I think I got like when I was like 16, I had like um I had like a platinum I, I had a platinum earring. Remember I I had a set of platinum earrings with um with like a pave setting. It was like X's but with like a pave setting. Like it was fire, you know, but like that was crazy. But I was 16. Um then as I got like what 20 and like I got like into like the whole like 18 to like 20, like when I got like into like the punk scene and stuff, I was just rocking like match sticks in my ears and like, you know, like I took just like a whole number, just like an innovative perspective, you know? Um word. But yeah, jewelry, like it's lit, you know? Cause like even back in the days, like like when we these kids, like in um like elementary school. We used to have like the um the winter fresh packets. Yep. And we used to put those in our teeth and act like they was grills, you know? <laughs> like, I love that. You know, and like and like where did we get that from? You know, like why did we want to do that? You know? Yeah, why? Like what was that? <laughs> that was hip hop. Exactly. You know, like we seen that right on the freaking music videos. We're like, all right, boom, we're gonna make our own, you know? So that's the the yes. innovation. You know? <laughs> so now, all right. So obviously, hip hop has had a major influence on you and myself, right? Because for me, it's been a journey. But the journey would have never started if I didn't fall in love with hip hop. That's why I asked you that question, because I think we both oh. share that in common. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, it, it definitely was like, I believed in hip hop with everything. So I wanted to express that. So um, that's how I fell in love with fashion. Me um, doing the eighties, you know, it was, it was very similar to right now in the respect that, you know, we're going through this um, fight the power movement and literally public enemy drop fight the power. You know what I mean? And it was don't believe the hype and all these things and the crack era was hitting the streets. And it was so much, um, anti-establishment in in the pushback of people being oppressed so for us it was just like how can we express ourselves and then hip-hop just started exploding and it was that expression and nobody understood it unless you were listening and you were in those streets so for me it spoke to me and I was already bling blinging out my jeans and ripping them up and, you know, bleaching them and doing airbrushing and all of this. So yeah, that's what's up. I just was like, you know what, this is what I want to do for my tribe. When did you say, like, how did you say that? Like, at what point? Because I can remember when for me, I was at the Apollo Theater at Amateur Night and we went to see Dapper Dan shop. And when I left, I was like, wow, we don't have anything like that in Brooklyn. You know, no custom shops representing us for us, making things that spoke to us. And I couldn't go in the store and get that. I wanted to make that and deliver it to my friends and my family. And really it just started from the gut. But like for you, what was that aha moment if you had one and and when? My aha moment was when, um, so, I rap, right? And I was on tour for like, for a minute. I was touring with this band called Spank Rock. It's my, it's my homie, Naeem. Um, he's like, as a band, it's like, um, it's like political party rap. It's like Baltimore club, and but he's just spitting so much dope, dope stuff, you know? Uh -huh. um, so I was doing Hype Man and I was doing um, like some of my songs during the set, right? But when I say, like I was just feeling so good like performing every single day like in different states different states um when I came back I had a show at Brooklyn Bowl and um I'm like yo I just feel so freaking good but but I need something to like like I want to look as good as I feel you know 
So I ended up, so I'm like, yo, I need to have like a ring to just like enhance my, like my performance. Cause I want you to look at the ring. Cause I do like right. a whole bunch of hand gestures all of that. Uh -huh. So I'm like, all right, boom. You know, so I'm gonna give you something extra to look at. You feel me? Yeah. So, so I went back to the crib and I, I seen my mom, she had a, um, she had a black tourmaline inside of a, um, like a mantle piece. And for some reason, I just went to her, I'm like, yo, yo, can you turn this into a ring for me? I didn't know if she made jewelry or nothing. Like, hey, I just have so much confidence in her that because like, she's just so artistic and she's a, a fashionista, right? So she, she took that ring, made it into a, made it into a tourmaline ring that um, basically covered two fingers, but it was one finger. I went on tour to, um, to Europe, right? And I started doing some interviews and everybody's like, oh my goodness, yo, that ring is so fire. That ring is so dope. That ring is so dope. I'm like, oh, shoot, I like this. Oh, wow, that's popping. So <laughs> when I'm coming back on a plane, I had like, a, um, like an epiphany. I'm like, yo, I wanna make three finger rings like this. If they like the one finger that covered two, let me do three finger rings. So then I, I, I told my mom, like, yo, can you make me a three finger ring? She, she starts doing that. Like she's banging them out, banging them out. But then she had to go to work. Right. So I'm like, yo, we got to freaking sell these. But she's like, yo, I got to work. So she taught me how to freaking make them. And then from there, I just was handing them out to my friends, putting them on my friends. I'm seeing them like, oh my goodness, this is so fire. And, and I'm seeing them transform into like, like they just look, you know, just like they leveled up a little bit, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> so I love that. From there, so so from there, I just kept doing it, and then from and then I started getting into casting and stuff. Like I seen sculptures, I'm like, yo, I want to make that into to a three finger ring, you know. Then and then from there, I had an epiphany of like, oh, let me do Mount Rushmore because that's gonna bring people in, like the money people, you know. But then I'm gonna reimagine it, you know, for my culture, you know. Then. Oh my goodness! I used to freaking wear matchsticks in my ears. Like I got a matchstick right here. <laughs> like I'm like, yo, let me turn this into an earring, you know? And then it just it, it, it's just something I just kept on kept on going, you know? And it hasn't stopped yet. And I don't I don't plan it to do that. <laughs> I don't I don't want it to stop. But <laughs> yeah, so I, I fell in love with it in 2012. <laughs> I had the aha moment. I love that story. You feel me? Word. Well, I have only been watching you from afar. And then we, you know, we we became cool. And I think um if I'm if I'm not mistaken, we first met because I was doing a photo shoot for Pattern magazine. And it was like a collective on the history of my brand, Walkerware me being one of the first brands in urban and streetwear fashion for people that don't know that might be listening. It was like a journey exploration through visuals and Pattern Magazine is super duper dope. They were really digging in deep. So we had Method Man and we had all these great people that were um, modeling with us of the culture. And I was getting my hair done. Hey. <laughs> And shout out to Jenny. Shout out to Jen. Shout out Jen, Jen. From Black. She said, you know my cousin, you're doing this shoot. You should call him. And I said, who? And she said, Johnny Nelson. She said, he lives near you. He lives in the neighborhood. I'm like, say word. So shout out to Jen. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's how we connected. And you came through in the clutch. You know, you had so many dope pieces. I was in awe of your work. And everybody was on the shoot from Method Man to Milk to Overtime Larry, Overtime Chloe, Tammy, like everyone loved, in pattern loved your work. But, you know, th that fused together our relationship, I think, in terms of building because we're both creative. Um, and then I think that's how we started building. But do you have a personal style? I have never asked you that. Like, I know what, what I see, but does it change? Does it evolve? How, how does that affect you a like you know what i mean in terms of that journey because with me it's different um well can you tell me your style first <laughs> <laughs> sure like if for me it's what day of the week it is and how i feel like literally right 
like some days I feel like sweats and I wear sweats. It's lifestyle, but it's, it really um, depends a lot about how I feel, you know, cause I could be totally one way. And then I love vintage, you know, I'm a big vintage fan. I love hip hop. I love mixing things together. Um, I've, obviously I love hip hop. But I really love to get dressed too. We haven't been able to do that too much because of COVID. But, you know, it just is depending on how I feel, you know? And how I feel is how I'm going to show up. And it might be really laid back, but it might be super duper fly too, you know? Um, so that really plays a part. And when I create, from my standpoint, a lot of how I feel is how I create in design. So that means my, a lot of the socioeconomic factors that are happening in this country right now play into how we feel. Like, so for me, like, I'm not going to be making, well, I'm, I'm, I'm opting for comfort right now in fashion because I'm in the house all the time. So that's what I'm going to create. You know what I mean? But it also, I'm creating things that make social statements that are for social justice, because that's important to me and it speaks to me and my tribe. So those are things that are important. But I think what I'm trying to say is like my inward, the way I feel affects my external tribe. That's the way I create. So I'm curious to know what your process is in terms of your design and how that relates to how you actually express yourself and create if they are in tandem or they're completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah. I understand what you mean. Um, well, my personal style, I feel like, well, just like on my everyday, it's just right now, like I've just been um, the real comfortable, you know, um, sweats, hoodie, <laughs> yeah. bandana, bandana um, yeah. razor blade earring. <laughs> That's a um, trademark of yours. You feel me? Facts, yo. Yeah. Um, but then, well, and I would say like the comfort, like that that intertwines with like the comfort because like even just like the way that I design like certain pieces, like I design like a four finger ring, right? But I would leave the the two middle fingers um open. You know, that's comfort. You know, that's how. I, I like you the, comfort, right? Right. You no. Know, um, wait, can you show that ring again one time close? We want to see that. Oh. Who, who's on that ring? I wear this ring every day. Um, you got Biggie, the notorious B.I.G. the King. You heard me. Yeah, um, representing <laughs> Brooklyn. We got Pac. We got ODB, and we got Easy E. You heard? That's classic hip hop. Four fingers of death, D E F. You heard? Um, yeah, this is my favorite ring. This is dope. Um, yeah, but then I have like my, I would say like my grunge, like my punk couture or like um, like my grunge look, you know. But but still, it was just the still hip hop, you know. So with that, that's when I would, that's when like my um like my punk aspects aspects play a part you know right so I, you know that's what like the razor blade earring or the or like the spike bat and then um i would say hip-hop that's where like my four finger rings and everything <laughs> come in right. you know you and then you tell a lot through your jewelry you story tell so like you just story you just told the story there how important is hip-hop to your creating pro your creative process does it drive it or is it storytelling in every sense of the word? But I know hip hop is a big part of that canvas. Is it black stories? Is it is it how you feel? You know what I mean? Does it change? It's yeah, like it's usually black stories and just stuff that I like I was inspired by, you know, as growing up. So that's the main reason why I made this frame, because I'm super inspired by all of these people. Um and I would say like my, like my um, my Black History rings. You know, that's I would say that's that's empowering. You know, definitely. 
our ring, I would say it's it's um it's a reminder, you know, it's um it's yeah, like it's empowering, like it gives me strength. It gives my like the the, the people that purchase it strength, like you know, like they might just need it to to give them that extra push for the day, you know, or just to know like, all right, boom, I got this Marcus Garvey on my finger, you know, so what, what am I doing? Like, why, why can't I push through today? Like, why can't I get this done? You know, like, I know what I'm supposed to be doing and like, you know, you know, this man, you know, um, created a blueprint for me, you know, and I'm gonna take it, take it further than he, than he can. Cause I have more resources because of, of him or her, you know? Yeah. So, um yeah and this and also like it's a history lesson you know that's what it's, i love about your work it's a history lesson and it's a conversation piece you know so when i wear these things it's like first thing you first thing you see like oh my goodness he got a big four finger ring on but it's like nah he got freaking marcus garvey on it he got harriet tubman somebody might not know who these people are you know now we get to talking you know and now we get to understand all right boom word the, the, some of the stuff that they were fighting for is still going on right now you know and maybe they might want to right a, a larger conversation you know so i like to make enlightening pieces you know like as well as like my punk rock stuff you know word <laughs> you go. That's pretty much like what's inside of you, and you pouring it out into the world. Yeah, you know, and it's like I feel like sometimes you don't like, or well, it's your art, you know, and it's like you don't know, or you, like you might not have like the like the the physical courage to actually just speak out, you know. But you're doing it through your art. Exactly. So in that way, let me ask you this. Do you feel like you've been pegged as a cultural innovator? You are one of the rising stars in the jewelry wor world and you have been in everything from Vogue to um, gracing. Oh my gosh, we could go on and on in accolades about seeing be seen with entertainers and movie stars, et cetera. Um, after Johnny Nelson's jewelry. So my question to you is, as an innovator in culture, do you feel a certain responsibility or do you just work from the gut, you know, or do you feel both? You know what I mean? To, 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 um, to the culture, so to speak, or you don't feel that responsibility and you're just working from what you believe in? That's just a question I have. Yeah, well, I think it's kind of both. Like, I, it's a responsibility to for myself to actually always be trying to grow and elevate, and to push myself to to just to just make new, creative, innovative things. And I feel like it's it's for the culture also because if if like we need it, you know, and um. And I feel like the work that I'm doing is just for somebody else to, you know, to 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 grab inspiration from and to just add on to it also, you know, and to basically take it to the next level. Like, I feel like we are here to like, you know, like we receive for the sake of sharing, you know, like, you know, let me, let me put this out, take it, love it, hate it, but you know, or if, if you hate it, make it better, you know, <laughs> love it, you know, cherish it and share it, you know, that's just what it's about. Um, but yeah, I feel like we have to put these messages out, you know, like we have to. And, and as I'm doing this stuff, like I'm learning like so much too, and because there's always people, people hitting me up, like, yo, yo, do this person, do this person. Like, and I, I might not, I might not even know who they are you know so then I gotta you know hit my, you know <laughs> and I'm just like wow you know I'm, it's dope it's like I'm in class but um <laughs> yeah it's just like I'm like working but I'm in class at the same time like it's fire you know mm -hmm. <laughs> they say we teach what we need to learn so I feel you totally you know a lot of my sharing when I do the mentorship 
and stuff like that that I'm doing in terms of fashion is because I didn't have that coming out. I was like, you know, just figuring it out as I go. And I know how important mentorship is. So for me, um, I have a certain responsibility in my mind, you know, just because that's the way I was raised, you know, as far as like community together is better. We are a village. Like, um, I believe we are all we got. So we have to pull together in our resources and our um, creativity and helping each other to grow and in sharing our stories because we can only tell us our stories, living our truth in a special way, way. And if we don't tell them, they'll either erode or be told in a different way or go away. So we need to tell our stories. So I do think it's really important to share. And I wanna acknowledge you for the work you do and just really sharing stories and history is really important. And, and it's beautiful work. And I think that's why people gravitate to it. Thank you. So um, I have a few more questions for you. And then I'm, you, if you have any questions, you could shoot back. But um, um, being a Black entrepreneur, I know what my experience is like. And I can talk about that a little bit. Um, but maybe you want to start? Um, do, 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 do. You said being a black entrepreneur. How has that journey been? Do you think it's been different for you than it is for other people? Do you have, do you find other challenges, um, more challenges as a black entrepreneur or has it been hard or has it just taken off for you and you haven't hit any bumps? And I'm, I'm using black right now because black is trending and we're in a state of emergency with the world. But also, I think we have a chance to shine light on issues that may exist to make it more fair and equi equitable for all right now, um, especially people that are of color and people that might not have those same opportunities. So have you had any challenges? And if you have, can you share a few of them? Um, I would say like challenges just in general for me, because I'm Black, is just like, that I don't have the same resources um, when it comes to like dealing with with jewelry, like in the diamond district and stuff like that. You know, like it's not as easy for me to to um, yeah, just to get the resources from these companies that've been there for like four generations and five generations and stuff like that, you know, because they're not, there aren't like a lot of black jewelers and stuff like that. Like we don't have like the storefronts, we don't have- um, The distribution. Yeah, you know, and they don't really want that <laughs> for us, you know, like they want to take from the hip hop culture, you know, like everybody pull up to the Diamond District and get- To purchase. You know, get dripped out, but they don't want us to have the storefronts out there and to like, they don't want us to be the ones that they go to. You feel me? Like they don't feel like there's enough bread to go around <laughs> or they mm -hmm. don't even want to consider it. You know, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's like, we've been here. That's it. You know? Yeah. Like it's real messed up, honestly. <laughs> how do you, how do you, um, how do you jump over those hurdles? Um, I, I just, I basically, like I made a lot of friends, you know? And then I have like a lot of friends in the jewelry business too. And I ask them questions. So we actually, like, it's like a community, you know, shout out to MIC Jewelry Week. Um, it's like, so basically like, we just ask questions and we share information a lot. You know, I might not know something, so I might hit up, my homegirl Erica Diggs, or you know, right. I might hit um um you know my homegirl Soul from from Ellen Santiago, you know? Yep. Mateo, like I might see Mateo out, you know, and it's like like nobody's really scared to to um to share, you know. So that's freaking popping. And then also it's just like like you really gotta be be in a be in the ground, you know? Like like be on the ground. Like I was really out there for like for years, you know, just like finding new casting places, asking people about, you know, like wholesale spots for like um, 
for like hardware and stuff like that. Um, trying to just telling people my problems, like, yo, I don't know how to do this. Um, can you can you point me to that direction? You know, like you can't really be scared to ask, you know, because even if they don't really want you there, you you might just be so annoying that they might just give it up. Like absolutely. <laughs> persistence <laughs> you know so i would say yeah like be persistent and you can't be scared you know Absolutely. Or if you're scared just get over that <laughs> just recognize it like okay i'm i'm nervous right now but i gotta freaking make this happen you know because i have a goal you know and i have a deadline you know and i gotta get this done because i, I got more stuff that i need to get out you know and i can't Absolutely. wait for that feeling of this piece to be made you know <laughs> I love that energy. I love that energy. And I, I can relate a lot, you know, um, being the first woman in urban fashion in a menswear lane, a menswear business, doing menswear, um, being hip hop out, you know, at 21, no one understood what that was like. And they thought I was crazy. And so sitting across from you know, all these garmental suit guys in the fashion industry. When fashion, when when hip hop wasn't a multi-billion dollar industry yet, they were like, this is a fad, it's gonna go away. Um, why should your sweatsuit cost the same prices as Fila? That's an Italian designer. You know, these are the comments I would get. And, and it was really a climb from my competition and counterparts all the way through to uh, just getting people on board to believe in it and to believe in me. But the one thing I hear you saying that we both had in common is the belief system. You know what I mean? And being relentless and being persistent and showing up every day, whether you know it or not, because that's how you're going to learn, you know, and you do build relationships, you network your ass off and you basically, um, learn as you go, but you have to start before you're ready. So it sounds like that's something we both did too. Yeah, that's you a fact. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we get to where we are now. So kudos to you for that. And I feel like, like, a, like it's like a, um, like it's more organic, like when you start, when you're not ready, you know? Yeah. Because it's like more like of a raw, Thing that you're doing you know it's like and it's and it's and it's it fresh you no know, because it's like if you're trying to get ready getting ready getting prepared and you already thought about these things that means that i that means that that idea is in the universe already and somebody else is about to move on it <laughs> it's so true so, so it's like yo just figure this out while we going you know this may not be the best advice for everybody but <laughs> yeah. it works but i mean me. like honestly <laughs> when i listen to a lot of those great stories most people say the same thing you start before you're ready you just get better as you go and grow as i say so you know um yeah so let but me what was it for, go ahead. no go ahead ask me nah, i just want to know like so how was it like basically just like coming up with like um like being the only female too, just like coming up with like Carl Kanai and them and um and like cross colors and like yeah, just like how was that back then? Like uh it was hard. It was really hard. Like I had um a climb. I can say in one sense I had men that were very supportive because I dressed Tupac, I dressed Biggie. I just run DMC. I mean, most of my clients were men and they and they they went out of their way to support me. So, you know, I say I'm blessed and I'm gifted to have had that experience because it's it was such an experience to work with such icons and so many creative people that were super creative and they become historic, you know what I mean? So just to have those moments priceless um did, did it feel competitive yeah it always felt competitive for me i mean like luckily when i was very young i was very driven so i really think that propelled me forward but also my competition changed at some point in my life where i became my own competition so that was good for me i think that's healthier you know um 
because you realize it's not about them. It's about you and you can only control your energy. And I say energy feeds energy. So when you shift that, that lens of thinking it's, it, it's them and it's you. And it's like, no, we're all in alignment because we could grow together, you know? Um, and I think that just became, that started because I was the woman and there were all these men. And a lot of times when you're a woman and you're in a room with all men, it's hard to be heard. It's hard for people to hear you, especially if we go back 30 years ago, you know? It was, it was a different time and a different place. And so you have to figure out ways to be innovative, to be heard, you know? And sometimes that means making a man in the room feel like he came up with the idea when you planted the seed or really have, have the idea. You know, the mission is to get the, the goal done, not to see who gets the credit for it. You know, that, that's what it became for me, you know, sometimes. And sometimes you got to know when to stand on the table and, and stomp your feet and say, no, this is not happening like this, you know? So it's just knowing balance, but it was difficult. It was walking a tightrope, definitely. Because I think if you're very independent as a woman, especially being younger, um, it was easy to get labeled as, as difficult to work with. Whereas I think if I was a man, I would have been known as like, wow, she's a beast in business. She's great. You know, the, 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 verb, the, the descriptions that to use, you know, you would have just been lifted up instead of being seen as difficult. And I think early on I was seen as difficult. But I think that, you know, that comes with the territory. You have to stand your ground and believe in what you believe in and, and stay strong and be convicted. My biggest barometer and my biggest uh, thing with making decisions in business or personally is can I sleep good at night? So, you know, that was it. Integrity. Yeah. So. Um, this year, this year, let's talk about this year. And then we're, we're talking about something that's hitting me that's near, near and dear to both of us, I believe. But this year, what has this year taught you? I mean, 2020 has taught me a few things, but what has 2020 and this pandemic taught you? Thinking about that with your business too, you know, and your jewels. Um, you said within my business, yeah, personally has, and professionally, you know. Oh, well, I'm I'm still like this. This year has actually been a lot, <laughs> it's been really draining. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's told me that to go back to source and like really get back grounded and in, in what to get back into the mode of what got me here, you know, which is um meditation and stuff like that you know there's a lot of energy going you know just within like the black lives matter movements and stuff like that the um the pandemic the, that anxiety you know um there's the been pandemic. a lot so i just i had to get back into like my working out and just like my meditation and stuff like that so that's got me back into source you know like more connected to source and then also um Within like, I would say, I learned that I, well, I already know, but like, it was a good time, like within like my pieces and stuff, I was getting like a lot of press and stuff like that. And like a lot of supporters. So I just, it just, it just really felt good to, to, to know that I have a lot of people standing with me and, and the pieces that I'm making are, you know, they are empowering people. Um, cause they was wanting it like they, like they want it you know and it, it it told me that I'm on the right path you know and I should keep on doing what I'm doing I think we're both wearing the same piece right now oh yeah the all power it Tell looks me good about that. Huh? thanks what when when um when did you create that hmm. Oh, 
I actually created I created the all power fist when I did the when I did when I did the 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 Pierre Morse the um the Met Gala for um the suits for for Kirby of Pierre Morse and and Lena Waif. Wow. So I had actually made um cufflinks well buttons buttons suit buttons for the um for the sleeves and then from there after after I did that I just like every time I make a piece there's just like a whole bunch of different things I could just do with them so I just basically I basically just re just remixed it you know word so that's when created this year has that been big for you I could only imagine it being really big this year yeah well the old power fist that's like a (laughs) go-to yeah like a lot of people hit me up for that for that piece it's just so simple and it just means so like it just means so much and what it means and the way that I'm that I made it is like yeah it's dope it's 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 less is more for me right and so when you asked me earlier about style like most days the less is more for me you know what I mean like but I want it to be strong in style and that's what this piece is and it's meaningful so yeah. so so getting through this year, I don't know how much time we have left, but what's really important that we talk about is health and wellness, right? You've talked about it already, but that's something we're both really passionate about. I'm curious if if you're like if that journey started with you as an entrepreneur or was it before that? And was it, did you start, if it was as an entrepreneur, was it an outlet for mental health and an outlet like to, as a stress reliever or, you know, what is your health? Like talk about your rituals and what was so important. You just touched <clears throat> on, but why are they so important? Oh, well, health, well, health and wellness. Well, I used to, when I was in like high school and I was like 16, from like 16 to 20, um, I used to get into like a lot of trouble and stuff. So this one dude, his name was June. He basically was like, yo, you get into too much trouble. So I'm gonna um, put you into boxing. So I started boxing when I was like 16. So yeah. that's always stayed with me. And then I had a group of friends when I was 18. Um, we used to have a workout group called the Barbarians. So we used to basically be real good on the pull-up bars and doing a whole bunch of tricks and stuff like that. And that just stayed with me. Like every time I see a scaffold in a, or, um, or just like a like a street post or anything like I'm doing some some pull ups, um, right. so that yeah so that's always been and it's always just been like a way to 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 clear my mind you know and to make me feel happy <laughs> to make me feel good you know because I honestly like I honestly need it you know like within like the jewelry business there's like there's like nothing is really certain that. Like nothing is really certain that you're gonna get stuff done on time. That um, that's gonna come out correctly. That you know that like nothing is definitely certain. You know, so it's real easy to get mad and to 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 burn a bridge. <laughs> you know, just because of mistakes. You know, um, so what I found myself doing, I feel like this was probably 2018. Like while I was at like taking like my runs throughout the Diamond District, I would stop, go to 42nd Street, Bryant Park. I would turn on a guided meditation and just start meditating, you know, just just so I could to just clear my mind and get back out there, you know, with the, yeah, with the clear mind and, and a calm persona, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I could be rational, you know, like it's really, like I need it. You know, and and I can't front like as I'm meditating, like I get ideas, you know, and just like the more clear I am, the more these ideas come through, you know. So it's something that's hand in hand with my work, word, and I'm I'm happy that I know the tools to make me happy, <laughs> you know, and to keep me grounded, <laughs> word, yo, but. What about you, though? 
I mean, it's pretty much the same journey. I feel like I've been on a workout journey all my life, pretty much. But I think it became more spiritual for me in the last 15 years, and it's just been growing. And then I added meditation and visualization onto that. First of all, I love nature and you say grounded. So I like to work out outside. That's really important to me. It's something about space and being with nature. And it's like when I'm in the moment of like extreme exhaustion that I don't think about anything else but that moment. And it's like, I'm in it and I'm just right there in, in alignment. So for me, that's really important to get centered and put things in perspective. Cause a lot of times I will go and be like, I need this right now. And I get into it and then I feel so much lighter and like, it's not that bad. Like I'm gonna be all right. You all right. know what I mean? Like you're, you're you tripping off of things that are too deep because we love what we do. And I think that's the passion and the purpose but you gotta keep things in perspective. And I think that, you know, if we're not okay like you said, you can't create or do anything else or help anybody else. So it's important for me to be that example as I want for myself, but also to create contagious behavior because we have lost a lot of people um, in the past within hip hop, within the world. And, you know, I think some of this stuff with with the proper diets, with working out, with exercise and moderation, or just finding the vices that can actually enable you and take you farther into life than kill you. Some of these things we're doing are killing us. And I'm just like, you know, and it's a journey. I'm still on the journey, but I'm in it. I'm in it, you know, and, and it really makes me feel good. And when I feel good, I think better. When, I, when I'm thinking well, I want to do more, you know what I mean? Physically, like I'm just like, let's go. It just really lifts me up and makes me want to create more. So it's, it, it all works together for the good for me. And it's meditation, it's visualizing, you know, um, and it's showing up for yourself. I think that's why it's important because honestly, when I'm in a consistent flow, like my day goes better at work. That's, That's right. you know, so it's important. And my energy is better with, with, if I'm trying to be a leader, it's much better to lead in that space than when I haven't worked out. That's just real talk. It's more of a challenge for me, you know, to even deal with other people, but um, that's just, that's just me. Um, you know, what is, what is the future right now? What does that look like for you? Do you have projects, you know, that you want to work on with jewelry? Do you have anything special in mind? Um, I have a, I have a new collection I'm going to release in a couple of weeks. Um, Ladies First Collection. I have, I have um, collaboration with my friend um, Wale from, um, he has a brand called Against Medical Advice. Um, we did a Fela Kuti piece. I love that, that piece. That's fire. Um, I have another collaboration with my friend Chris Rocket. He's an artist also. Um, and I just have a lot of dope stuff coming for 2021, you know? But um, I'm really excited about this new woman's collection of the, on the first, the ladies' first collection. I'm really excited about it. Can you show, can you show us a peek? Oh, I don't think I have it. Okay. All right. All right. We got to find it online. That's cool. Tell us about it though. What was um, the inspiration? So I basically took took a lot of pieces that I've that I did for the PMO show. Um the their their um their their there was a 2019 fashion show. Um I made like a big neck piece, but I basically took took those faces, made them into rings. I made um, made like big stud earrings, um, big neck pieces. Also, um, then I then I also have some small, like then I actually took those pieces. I three D scanned them, and I sized them down, and then redesigned them into into like petite like 
smaller pieces, like, you know, for like everyday wear, you know, so that's, that's just so, for me, it's to, for me, it's, it's like, it's new, you know, and it's exciting because I'm like the big ring guy, you know, <laughs> so now I'm just like, you know, like I want to cater to more, to more, well, just like to a broad audience, you know, it's a big audience, so I'm excited for it. And I think it's it's amazing. I I love it, <laughs> and I hope everybody else does too. You yeah. know, I want to get on your calendar for a collab in the future. Yeah, let's do that. Let's figure it out. I'm let's with it. it I think that um, you know, I have one question for you, and that <clears> is <throat> that one question left, and that is how do you think um, you know, I, let me just say for myself, I do a shameless plug right now in terms of my future projects. Um, I'm getting ready to drop the audio book to a book I wrote called Walker Gems, Get Your Ass Off the Couch. And it's all about the passion pursuit and, you know, moving forward. It's about my journey and just sharing jewels from that. And also there's a film called The Remix Out, Hip Hop Times Fashion. And that is about culture shifters. And it's with Misa Hilton, Dapper Dan, Pierre Moss, and myself. It's on Netflix. Um, and then Walk Aware. We are a climbing well, and I'm really excited about it. My website, my personal website went up yesterday. I am AprilWalker.com. And yes, when I think about New York City Jewelry Week, I mean, I, I just, just can't say enough about um, when we think about jewelry, I think about New York setting the trend for the rest of the world because I've traveled the world and while everyone else does it a little bit differently, New York really is the trendsetter when it comes to um, jewelry to bling, to wearing things differently, period. And I don't think like from the Diamond District to all around and what we're seeing now, we, I've never seen such a diversity in terms of jewelry. So um, I know that had to influence you growing up here in New York because it influenced me, you know what I mean? And what my style would be and look like from a jewelry perspective either. I got into costume jewelry as a teenager and it was just because everybody was doing this and I wanted to do something different. And I can remember when I first started wearing it, people were teasing me. Um, and then all my friends started doing it after, you know what I mean? So it's just like how you do things and put things together and make it work. But yeah, I just felt like saying that because it's true. That's a fact. I'm like, I remember when like, like, like my friends, like some of my friends, like a lot of my friends, they was like, they like, yo, why are you making jewelry for? You a rapper. What are you doing? <laughs> they like, yo, what are you doing? They're like, yo, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. But like, they wasn't really feeling it, you know? When I was like, oh, shoot. Ah, uh, you know, like. Right, always. always. It's way like, I feel like they probably thought I was crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's happened to me a lot. You just got to <laughs> do what you believe. That's what I think. Is there anything, if you could tell the people out there swinging with AIM with their dreams, what would the, be the one piece of advice you would give them? Um, I would just say go for it, you know? Go for it and ask questions, you know? And don't be afraid to ask for help. Word. There you go. This has been a great conversation. You have anything for me? Before we, we get say peace out to the people and thank you everyone that chimed in. I'm not even sure who's on, but thank you for listening to us. Um, I just want to say, well, thank you for being my friend, <laughs> and thank you for for um for being so like inspiring, you know, like and just even like pushing me too. Also, like you know, like I'm really appreciative. Um. And I appreciate you and I appreciate your journey also, you know, and I, I'm I'm happy that I that you're somebody that I can call when I need some advice or just, you know, just a little push, you know. I'm I'm, I'm really appreciative. So namaste. You heard? Namaste. <laughs> namaste. Bless. Um.